All right, so just going to do a quick run through of the occipital, temporal, sphenoid, and probably the ethmoid bone as well. Um, so we're looking inside the skull right now, but I'm going to flip it up and pretty much onto its back. So now we're looking from the in inferior point of view. Um, so this bump right here is called the external occipital protuberance. Along this bump, we have a line or a ridge, and that's called the superior nuchal line. Below that is the inferior nuchal line. Between the protuberance and the inferior line is what's called the external occipital crest. So again, just to review really quickly, we have the external occipital protuberance the superior nuchal line, the inferior nuchal line, and then the external occipital crest. Um, also part of the occipital bone would be the hypoglossal canal, which is where the hypoglossal nerve runs through. I'm going to turn this up here. So, well, let's do it this way, sorry. So here you've got the articular condyles, which would articulate with the atlas on uh, C1. If you flip that up, and let's see if you can see in there, possibly, you're seeing a couple of holes there, and that's the hypoglossal canal. If you look into the skull, you'd see the foramen magnum, and then the hypoglossal canal is right there. You have to get it into some funky angles to see it. Um, so again, all part of the occipital bone. So foramen magnum, articular condyles, and then the hypoglossal canal, which runs basically right in front of those um, and almost underneath them. So on to the temporal bone. You can really easily see that from the side. It's right here. It's the temporal bone. You can also see it from the inside, which is this section here and this portion here. And then, yeah, same thing over here. Um, so the temporal bone has two main parts. There's a squamous part and a petrous part. Now again, keep in mind we're looking at a lateral point of view. The squamous part just means it's the flat portion of the bone. So, and you can see it's just nice and flat. The petrous portion, portion um, means it's basically not flat. Uh, and that's this whole section here. And you can see a lot of jet outs and points and ridges and valleys and all that kind of stuff. So, over here on the inferior, or, uh, sorry, uh, top down view, uh, looking inside the skull. Again, you can still see that squamous portion, nice and flat, round, but then when you get over here, definitely not. So, squamous and petrous. The zygomatic process of the temporal bone is going to be right here. It meets up with the zygomatic bone. The mandibular fossa, I'm going to flip it over to the inferior point of view. The mandibular fossa is right there and right there. That's where the mandible is going into and articulating with. Um, the mastoid process, from this point of view, the two biggest bumps on the lateral sides, the mastoid process. I'm going to turn it to the side really quick. You can see with that. That's what you can feel uh, the, bump, the bump right behind your ear. The external and internal acoustic meatus, um, if you go just forward, and that's why I said, you know, right behind your ear, it's a fancy word for ear hole. Um, external acoustic meatus is just uh, anterior to the mastoid process. Sorry. Um, and then on the inside, you can kind of follow where 
the external acoustic meatuses. They kind of come straight over. Then right underneath this little ridge is the internal. And really hard to get on a camera, but it's right in there. It's the internal acoustic meatus. And where were we? Okay. So we looked at the mastoid processes. If you go forward a little bit further, um, there's two smaller, thinner processes, and that, those are called the uh, styloid processes. The styloid. I'm going to turn the skull this way. So you can see mastoid and styloid. The last part of the temporal bone I want to talk about is the stylomastoid foramen. Between the styloid process and the mastoid process is a foramen. And that's right there. It's kind of colored red on this side by somebody in the past. So, um, Anyways, that would be called the stylomastoid foramen. Uh, very logically named. So I'm going to hit the uh, sphenoid bone, or sphenoid, can't talk, <laughs> um, hit that really quickly. Uh, three main parts, you've got the body of the sphenoid, you have the um, greater wing, which is, if you can see that black line, it's kind of this whole section, and this whole section on either side, and then the lesser wing, which would be right around here. Uh, here. If you check your atlas, they're always colored in and look pretty, but on an actual bone it's kind of harder to pick out. But big wing, little wing, that's really what you need to know. Um, if you look from the external side, this is part of the greater wing of the sphenoid. Flipping it over, you can still see all sphenoid bone here, and greater wing on the other side, sorry. And, um, where the sphenoid meets the temporal bone, meets the parietal bone, meets the frontal bone, that point is called the pterion, P-T-E-R-I-O-N, the pterion. All right, so going back to the um, inside view. The optic groove on the body of the sphenoid bone is right here. Those holes are the optic canals, which is where your optic nerve runs through. And uh, when that optic nerve comes out and meets up in the optic chiasm, um, it basically sits in this groove in the sphenoid bone. So, optic groove. Um, we talked about the optic foramen. The cella tersica is this general area right here. It's made up of a lot of just small little bony prominences, and this is kind of degraded or broken off, so it's really hard to see here. Uh, but just know that this area is the cella tersica. Um, the divot or, or fossa here is called the pituitary or hypophyseal fossa. And that's just this depression right here. That's where your pituitary gland sits. On the greater wing, you have the foramen rotundum, the foramen oval, and then the foramen spinosum. It's just three holes right in a row. They house mostly the trigeminal nerve, uh, the different branches. The lesser wing of sphenoid we talked about a little bit before. It's just right around here. And the um, superior orbital fissure is the hole right underneath the optic canal, and it's a big hole, but very hard to see on a camera. You can maybe see part of it right there. Uh, if I flip the skull around and look from this point of view, where those big areas are, that's the superior orbital fissure. A uh, very big opening for lots of stuff. And the last thing I want to mention is the pterygoid process, and for that I'm going to flip it over, so I'm going to be looking up. Um, on this particular skull, you can see a lot of this is chipped and broken away, but this is still part of the sphenoid bone, and it's 
the whole structure is called the pterygoid process. Um, there's a lot of specific names. I'm not too concerned about those right now. Uh, but basically what I want to point out on the pterygoid process is the medial and lateral plates. The medial and lateral pterygoid plates. So again, medial lateral pterygoid plates serve as attachment sites for the medial and lateral pterygoid muscles. Um, and uh, last but not least for right now, um, we're going to do the ethmoid bone. It's this section here. And can't see too much of it from the inside, but not that it's called the vomer, but kind of up in there a little further um, would be more of the ethmoid, but not too much going on here, uh, but very, very important. Uh, so you've got the cribriform plate right here. It's the cribriform plate. And then this jut out right here is called the cristagalli. The cristagalli. So cribriform plate, cristagalli. Cribriform plate, of course, is where your uh, olfactory nerve runs to. That is all for now.